One of the major features coming with Cinema 4D Release 20 are fields. Fields are replacing falloffs of, for example, deformers or MoGraph effectors. So everywhere you previously worked with falloffs, you now have fields. Fields are available for effectors, deformers, vertex maps, vertex colors, selection tags and volumes. Unlike falloffs, fields are object-based, meaning they appear as separate objects in the object manager. Their parameters can be modified just as with other objects in the corresponding attribute manager or with handles of their visual representation in the viewport. Fields can be created either in the main menu under Create Fields or on the fields list of the corresponding object. Although fields are replacing falloffs, the corresponding tab of the deformer, effector, etc. is called fall off. Let's see a first simple example. Fields and deformers. Open up scene 01 deformer multi-referenced.c4d. In this scene we have two planes being constantly deformed by one noise driven displaced deformer each. By creating a linear field under create fields then going to the deformers tab fall off and dragging the field in the fields list we restrict the deformation to the length and direction given in the Fields tab Field. We now have created a linear field-based falloff for the deformation. Please note, as fields are separate objects, we can connect one and the same field to multiple deformers. So the second displaced deformer and also the cloner object can refer to the linear field in its fields list. So if the field is referenced by deformers, both deformers and the cloner, we can control all of them by one and the same field object. Fields and effectors. Open up scene 02 cloner random field.c4d. In this scene we have a cloner in honeycomb array mode being affected by several fields. A radial field, a linear field, a random field and a spherical field. All of them are linked to the cloner via the corresponding plane effector. Please note, the plane effector is by definition only performing a shift in position, scale or rotation. This effector plays an important role in conjunction with fields as it can take over the tasks of several other effectors such as shader, sound, formula, step and volume. We will now have a closer look at the function of these fields in this example scene by examining the possibilities of the fields list. The center of all your fields work is the fields list in the tab falloff of your corresponding object, in this case the plane effector. Additionally to the main menu command create fields, you can create list entries directly in the fields list. Entries can be field objects, field layers or modifier layers. These entries can be stacked and mixed with each other and layer modes such as multiply, subtract, screen, etc. can be applied just as you know it from, for example, Adobe Photoshop. Fields list entries can be activated and deactivated by clicking the checkbox left to the fields name. They can affect both value and color of the clones. This can be activated or deactivated with the corresponding icons right next to the fields name. Let's have a look at the different types of fields list entries. Field objects. By clicking and holding the lower left side drop down menu, you can choose between 14 different types of field objects, ranging from different geometrical shapes to shader, formula, sound, or even Python driven fields. Let's see some examples of field objects in our scene 02 cloner random field.c4d. Random field. This creates a value and color modification of clones driven by noise shaders and their well-known parameters. Visual representation is an open cube with a corresponding noise pattern on its sides as well as handles for the actual shape of the noise. Linear field. This creates a linear value and color modification based on the length and direction given in the field objects attribute manager. Visual representation are corresponding planes with handles representing length and direction. Spherical field. 
This creates a value on color modification in a spherical shape. Visual representation is a sphere with an inner and outer radius and corresponding handles. Radial field. This creates a value and color modification in a radial shape. Visual representation is a radial or cylindrical shape with handles for start angle, start transition, and end angle, end transition. Iterations creates multiple radial parts which can be modified by offset. The tab offset provides the ability to modify the offset by a so-called subfield. We will come back to subfields a little later. Field layers can be created by the corresponding drop-down menu Solid. Here you can basically create effect layers manipulating the underlying entry of the fields list. Field layers do not appear as separate objects in the object manager. Let's see an example. Open up scene 03 time field layer.c4d. In this simple scene, a time field layer causes the rotation of the radial field. Modifier layers can be created by the corresponding drop down menu on the right side. Modifier layers modify values made available by other layers. They perform operations such as decay, freeze with the option to grow field effects, quantize, curve, etc. We will have a closer look at modifier layers in our best practice example at the end of this feature section. First, let's see a simple example in scene 04 grow modifier layer.c4d. Here, a vertex map tag is created on a polygon object. Then, an emitter field object is created by dragging an emitter object from the object manager into the fields list of the vertex map tag. Entering particles are now recognized by the vertex map tag. A freeze modifier layer in grow mode and set to layer mode add adds a growth effect to the created vertex map. With the folder plus button right next to the modifier layer drop down menu, you can create folders for organizing the content of your fields list, just as you know it from Adobe Photoshop or the Cinema 4D layer shader. Open scene 05 clamping remapping color remap.c4d. Clamping. The result of the complete fields list does affect the strength of the deformer, effector, etc. So if you have one field with a strength of 100% and another one with a strength of 100% as well and layer mode add, you end up with an overall effect of 200%. That means your effector would affect the clones by 200% of modulation. To avoid that and to clamp all values to 100%, you activate the clamp button in the lower right corner of the fields list. Additionally, clamping can be modified in each layer in the tab Remapping with the checkboxes and sliders of Clamp Min and Clamp Max. Remapping. The Remapping tab of the field allows you to define the actual geometrical shape of the field. Here you can define if the falloff of the deformer, meaning the field, should have the function quadratic step quantize or Bezier based curve. With strength you define the intensity of the fall off whereas inner offset adds a certain value to the start of the fall off shape. Min and max control where the scale of the fall off intensity starts and ends and multiplier adds a multiplication to your counter. Color remap. If a field has an effect on the color of clones, maybe such as the radial field, colors can be remapped either in terms of one defined color or in terms of a color gradient. Please note, to override the material of a clone with the colors of a field, the cloner's parameter use color and the tab basic must be set to on and the effector parameter color mode in the tab parameter 
must be set to Fields Color. Subfields. Subfields are where things can really get complex. Basically, subfields are fields enabling you to control the features of a superior field. Let's see two simple examples in scene 06 subfields.c4d. Example 1. The radial field contains a random field as a subfield in its tab offset. This random field is varying the radial extension of the clones by a large scale Perlin noise. Example 2. The formula field contains a random field as a subfield in its tab subfields. This random field is varying the formula based color variation of the clones by a large scale Perlin noise. Best practice example shoreline. Vertex maps fields and modifier layers. In scene 07 vertex map modifier layers.c4d you will find a fully fledged field setup. Let's see what's in there, step by step. A water cube is regularly going up and down on a world y-axis. This movement is caused by a vibrate tag. A displaced deformer performs a noise-based surface deformation along the world y-axis creating the movement of waves. This deformation is restricted to the upper surface of the cube by a linear field in the displaced deformers tab falloff. In point mode, the polygon object landscape was activated and the main menu command select set vertex map was executed, resulting in a vertex map tag. In the tag, a second linear field is linked. The height of the field is determining the width of the wave's wet map, meaning the shoreline. As the linear field is a child of the water cube, it is also moving up and down, as well as the resulting shoreline of the vertex map tag. At the bottom of the fields list, a shader field carries a copy of the shaders within the displaced deformer. This shader movement is kind of continuing the movement of the waves on the shore. The aforementioned second linear field is masking the shader field beneath with a layer mode multiply. On top of both fields there is a modifier layer curve increasing the contrast of the underlying fields. And on top of that a decay modifier creates a time-based decay of all of this. The result is a delayed moving wet map on the landscape which is linked in the landscape's material by a vertex map shader. 